Okay, uh, let's continue. General chemistry part 23. Continue on chemical reaction classification. And uh, we may finish this getting to balancing chemical reaction equations. All right, now uh, we uh, stopped at the introduction of a synthetic process called synthesis reaction. And then uh, it is defined as some kind of starting chemical compounds were simple, small, and simple, and then uh, but then they react to form a complicated complex of uh, the uh, uh, products. So that is the situation we in general say A reacts with B, C, give you A, B, C, right? And then they normally can uh, consider uh, as uh, 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 composition as well, composition reaction. Now, uh, example for that, we already talked about the hydrogen gas, right, diatomic molecule, burns in the air, which have 21% of oxygen gas by volume, and then uh, to produce water vapor or the steam, right? So that's the uh, situation here. And the written statement of the reaction. Now, the chemical reaction equation will represent a statement by the hydrogen gas molecule H2, now it has, each one of these hydrogen atoms has zero as the oxidation state, right? And uh, as well as high oxygen gas, the diatomic molecule, each oxygen atom will have a zero oxidation state, right? But they then form a water molecule, no longer the same oxidation state. So there must be electrons transfer process involved in the process, in, in the reaction. So who's giving away the electron? Of course, uh, hydrogen gas, uh, hydrogen atoms, and they give the oxygen atoms gain two electrons each. So you need a four electron for one what? For one oxygen gas molecule, right? From zero in order to get into minus two, right? That's the case. So this chemical reaction definitely can be classified as redox reaction as well. So it is also a redox reaction because electron transfer, right? Now that is the example for synthetic process or synthesis or composition reactions, whatever we call it. Now that's number four. Number five, it is opposite. It's called decomposition reaction and defined as forming some simpler products from a more complicated reactant. Nobody has one. In the general case, is one complicated molecule, ABC, uh, will decompose under normally the energy input because you break the bond between them, you involve heat. All right, and then uh, to form A plus BC or AB plus C or AB plus BC. It could be a little bit on either uh, A and C, right? So that's the, but it's still simpler because the three is a polyatomic uh, compound formula. This is uh, a simple, a pair of simple binary compound, right? It's so simpler. So that's the case. Now, example, we normally uh, do not pay attention, but if you in the, uh, well, you, you're born in this uh, modern age. We normally don't paint your wall in your house with a uh, calcium oxide, right? But if, where you got calcium oxide, you mix with a calcium carbonate, which is a white uh, chunk, and drop into the water. Immediately, it releases a lot of heat and smokes, and then it dissolves in water. And then that water solution. Right, it's a very very cloudy, and then you use the brush to brush on the wall. But it now considered probably it contains some uh, lead in there, so it's not no longer being used. But when you dry, it, it's so white. So that's a white wall. It was it was old time, you know. We do that. So what is happening here is the calcium carbonate is solid, and you drop into or you heat up. You drop in water, it will decompose. Right? If you heat up, it will decompose by itself. You just put calcium carbonate into the oven and then uh, light up and then uh, provide a very high temperature uh, 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 frame, about 800 degrees Celsius, right? and then decompose into what? Calcium oxide. 
dioxide and potassium oxide and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is the gas. You don't get a chance to collect it because it's a fume in the evolve in the and of the chamber of the chimney, right? But you do have a solid, solid uh, uh, powder, calcium oxide, and the re remain in the in the in the in the, in the burning the burner or furnace, and then that's all. You, so you have two pro products. But is this also a redox reaction, just like a synthesis reaction, right? We just talk about. No, this is not. This one is just typically. This one is not. Check the oxygen state of each element: calcium, carbon, and oxide. Right? Oxygen, right? Calcium, alkaline, earth metal, second family, second A, right? And uh, they don't have but only one oxygen state. For every member in the family, it is plus two, right? Plus two. Now, is plus two stock in the carbonate? Is this uh, also plus two? Check. It's one to one ratio for calcium oxide. The oxygen normally is what? Minus two, right? Now you have minus two oxygen. Then you have to have the calcium plus two to be able to balance charge and to get a zero neutrality, right? So the calcium begins start from plus two and with plus two. The calcium. It's not common, okay? Make sure you understand. This is a, the symbol symbolism, right? It is symbol for calcium, C A. The carbon and the C. That is, these two are not the same element, right? Because uh, in case you you, you, you don't remember, it, it just remind you, okay? Because uh, I know your background in chemistry before we take this class is quite, quite uh, weak, right? Now the oxygen minus two. Is this also oxygen minus two? Carbonated, CO3. If you recall, we talked about a list of uh, compounds, right? Normally we rain to carbonate probably is included in that table I gave you a long time ago. And but if it's not, and it just is time for you to get carbonate, the whole polyatomic anion present a two minus charge towards the outside world. That's why the whole thing two minus and combined with a two plus was which is the charge for cation for calcium give you neutrality as zero, right? Now the two, mi two minus for the CO3, and then look into it. Carbon, what is carbon? Carbon normally what? Carbon normally plus four and minus four. Now let's figure out is, is it plus four or minus four, which one? But we know oxygen. Oxygen is minus two. You got three of them. Total is going to be minus six total. Minus six total, right? Take away by the plus two, got minus four. This got to be plus four. Carbon, it is plus four. So here, carbon is plus four, right? Carbon is plus four. Oxygen is minus two, but you got what? You got three of them, right? Now you balance plus six and minus six. Do you see that? So it is neutral, neutral compound. When then we check the carbon dioxide, uh, y'all you, you should have already built up something in your mind. Your brain is able to classify, sort them out, and the Categorize them into your brain as memory. You know, oh, carbon dioxide, oxygen minus two, oxygen minus two. You got two of them, right? And then two minus two four. Is a four minus. So this must be plus four. Now start from plus four and up with plus four. So the oxidation state does not change for carbon either. Oxygen, of course, is not. So this is completely not relate to redox at all. So question is redox? No. But since you have the gas formation, right, this might also be considered as a classified as gas formation because you start from solid, start uh, end up with a solid with gas. So part of the products is gas, then we are probably allowed to classify this kind of reaction as one type of a gas formation reaction. Clear? Okay. So that's the end of these two. All right, number four, number five, we just finished. Now we are able to get into number six. What is number six? We talked about a double displacement or double replacement reaction, right? A, B react with C, D, right? They exchange partners. 
the anion or the cation, whichever the portion of the ionic compound, right? They are ionic compound. They are able to have pairs of cation and anion, right? Within the crystalline structure, but they are uh, firmly bonded in the solid, right? But when you drop in water, we talk about water, right? What is a polar molecule as a solvent? If it has a solvent, 99% or at least 90% or more in the beaker is going to be the water molecules, right? And the solute, whichever the ionic compounds, the two of them, you mix them, right? Drop into the water, it's going to be small, minor amount of the, the concentration is low, right? So when they, under massive attack of polar, <laughs> polar solvent, polar molecule water solvent, right? And the attraction from opposite charged polar molecule towards the opposite charge, the cation anion pair is tremendous. So they quickly dissolve and dissociate into free, right, free moving cation and anion pairs in the vast ocean of what? Of polar water molecules. A solid. Do you see? Do you, can you see the picture? If you can, I would suggest, I would advise everybody that. Sometimes you have to, right? Sometimes they have to. If you go on, if you if you go, if you've gone through so much, right? For for any trouble or you're sick or something, so many going on, so much goes going on in your life. Sometimes you try to deal with them, this and that, one after another. You run out of time, run out of energy. You get exhausted. So that is the time you what? You when you sit down, close your eye, be quiet, and close your eye. In my case, you close your eye, imagine. Oh, there's a beaker, there's a solution. Like you are able to visualize it, but you're not, you're not going to see them because they are invisible, right? But you can't imagine. The human imagination is unlimited, right? So you imagine, oh, there's some tiny little bit of cation this and anion that, and, uh, and the attack by the polar molecule called water molecule H2O, right? It's actually HOH, right? The o, I, o N is negative and the H N is slightly positive. They attack, but then they have Pulling, you know, they all like a tug of war. Everybody pulling, right? So many water molecules pulling the end of the cow or anion, right? And then finally pull them apart so quickly. So they dissolve, dissolve, and dissociate into a solution. And the solvent become a what? A solution of ionic compound, or you call salt, right? So, now that is the situation we talk about here, right? Now, uh, then uh, what are we going to talk about? Double displacement? Yeah, double displacement reaction, we already briefly touched. One of those examples we saw is what? Neutralization reaction, remember that? So let's talk about a neutralization reaction, right? V, I, right? That's number six, right? So, or acid. Base reaction. Right? That's the basic reaction. Now it's defined as with what? Defined as the uh, acid and the base, right, going through a uh, compound as a reactant, so going through a double displacement mechanism, right? And the only driving force to what? To form one of the typical products for acid-base reaction is what? Is water. Water is what? Is a liquid. So under the driving force to become a liquid, right, products, then neutralize the solution from either acid or base or alkaline, right, into a neutral pH equals 7 saline or aqua solution with the ionic products as a salt as one of the products in the solution. So it's complicated, right? Let's look here. So the uh same basic bit depends on what? Depends on acid, right? And base, right? Uh, as reactants. To right exchange exchange what exchange their partner right exchange their their uh, partner 
partners, right? Or it's called a conic. You know, it's a, either the iron anionic or cationic uh, 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 portion, right? Partner. To to uh, to uh, 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 exchange exchange partner, exchange partner under under driving force. Let's put it here under the driving force. Driving force of, of what? Of forming forming. Uh, liquid uh, water right? H2OL now I'm very particularly picky on this as as one or as one as one as one of one of the two typical products 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 right typical products uh, to neutralize Either the acidic solution or the uh, alkaline alkaline solution, right? Put a base in there, right? The base, right? Into a neutral salt solution. Uh, salt, neutral salt aqua solution. Neutral salt. Aqueous aqueous solution and uh, give a pH value equals seven. Right? If that's the case, right? If that's the case, could it be uh, less than seven? Could it be higher than seven? Become become the later chapter we're going to discuss was acid base. We may involve strong acid react with weak base or strong base react with weak acid or both are weak base and weak acid depends on the nature of the two acid base to start with this is only talk about if we have a strong acid strong base they will be equally neutralized right come almost exactly neutral then the value for pH value for that solution will be right on top of seven right now we have that in the previous chart, uh, previous parts. We talked about we listed. Remember we listed down there the hydronium concentration was a bracket H three O plus one and I put one equal one point. Uh, as I think one point zero is actually one point one times ten to minus seven. Big M, big capitalized M means molarity concentration for hydronium that define the uh, acidity or alkalinicity. And then, but here we talk about it. Seven is almost exactly neutral. Okay, so go through what? Go to the exchange partner. What is the exchange partner? Of course, double displacement reaction, right? So let's see what is the example. What is gen in general in generalized format, right? For this, so this time we have in general, right? What time? Ten minutes. Okay. So in GNO, right, it is a what? Double displacement. So you have A, B, right, and of course the aqueous, and the plus C, D, also aqueous, right? Aqueous, right? And then you have to exchange the partner A, 
goes to D, B goes to uh, C goes to B, right? So A goes to D, and it could be aqueous salt, and then plus in this case, right? This is gonna be the C over D, C or D. Now this is actually should be water, right? Could be water in it. So this could be a liquid. Now that's generalized. We did not get into. So if we wanted a real example, right? Real example. There's very, very many. So we just picked up one example, right? Right. Caustic soda, right? NAC, uh, NaOH, right? Sodium hydroxide. It's a, one of the strongest base. Let's react with the uh, another uh, strong acid. Let's just pick, we picked up already that one. Uh, we picked the next paper, uh, nitric acid. All right, that's another. So let's see, nitric acid, H, nitric. Remember general format for oxygen related oxy acid, right? For nitrogen to be the non metal, and uh, what is the number of a hydrogen? The x value is 1, right? And then N, right? And the oxygen value, the y value is the what? Y value is 3, right? That's the, now let's say, all right, nitric acid. And then uh, react with the uh, caustics. Caustic soda. We call sodium hydroxide. And this is a strong acid, very concentrated, and the yellowish and the liquid. All right, sticky. And then this one is a palette, a clear palette, but it's very easy to be uh, getting wet because it absorbs the moisture in the air so quickly it becomes uh, a solution, but it's, a, it's very concentrated. But we drop in water mix solution, right? So, so it's going to be aqueous, right? Now these two exchange partners, now which partner we exchange, right? That's acid, strong acid, strong base. So the cation in the acid is the what? Hydrogen, right? And the NO3 is what? Now you should know what it is called. It's called nitrate, right? Nitrate. Nitrate and NO3 is one minus charge and anion, and the H is a plus one charge, the one plus charge is cation. So we exchange your exchange partner. Exchange what partner? We exchange partner either use the anionic portion, swap, right? Or you swap the cationic portion. So let's swap the cationic portion. So this and uh, Exchange with this, right? The sodium goes to nitrate, the hydrogen goes to the hydroxide. So sodium goes to nitrate, become what? Sodium nitrate. Now we're not getting to that solubility rule here. So the next one, the next half hour, we can talk about precipitation reaction. We're going to introduce the solubility rule table, and that table is kind of uh, for some of the is confused because it has something say this and it should be this but always have exceptions and then another category says it should be that but also have something exception so you have to remember the in general majority case plus quite a few small number of exceptions right so here we let's just give to you the sodium nitrate right and basically, when you talk about solubility rule, the nitrate form any compound with NO3 is going to be soluble. Right? That is the rule of thumb, right? Don't forget that. Just, we just started. We're not getting there. So, and then here you have what? Well, you have a hydrogen which is going to combine with what? Combine with because hydrogen goes to the position of a sodium, right? Right? Oh gosh. Right? Sodium. And then sodium goes to nitrate. So this can become HOH. What is that HOH? HOH, HO2, 2O, right? So liquid. Right? That is. The, now, then pH equals 7 because strong acid, strong base, they really react with each other completely 100%, and then uh, that kind of swap, that kind of uh, exchanging partner process, or under the driving force of forming liquid water. What's liquid water? Water was L. L means what? L is liquid, the symbol for physical state as liquid, right? So uh, now that's neutralized, and of course pH is going to be pH equals seven. Now, is this uh, chemical reaction 
uh, what we say as acid-base neutralization reaction, that's one classification, and also it is exactly, it exactly is considered as double displacement, uh, two different kind, right? Two different class is involved. It, 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 it involves, involves, and do you see, is there any possibility for this reaction to be a redox, right? Now, is that combustion? No, there's no heat involved, so there's no combustion. There's no any organic compound burning to carbon dioxide and, and the water vapor. Now, that is water vapor combustion, right? G, this is L. Right? They are different, right? So, let's check the uh, oxidation state, very simply. H is plus one. So, the nitrogen is minus one, right? Nitrogen, the whole thing is one minus anion. And the hydrogen is losing one electron, become plus one, one plus, so one plus. On this side, this side, of course, you know, the hydrogen in the water is one plus each, right? So, one plus. so hydrogen doesn't change, if it's, uh, it does not change the oxidation state, right? Now, what about the nitrogen? The nitrogen, nitrogen not even come out of the nitrate. NO3 is a cluster of substances or species we call polyatomic ions, right? Remember that? Polyatomic means more than two, more than at least two, more than two elements involved with more than two or three atoms total, right? So that's what it, so this whole thing, NO3, one minus doesn't even split in the active solution process. So it stick to the, so this NO3 is the exact same NO3 on the other side. So it doesn't, doesn't involve any oxidation state change, so it is the same. Then we see the sodium. The sodium chain, plus one here, the OH is one, one minus, right? Hydroxide, always one minus, why is oxygen minus two, uh, two, two minus, other minus two, yes, uh, hydrogen is uh, plus one, so total, the combined effect for oxidation state for OH is, is minus one, what we call one minus as iron, anion, right? So sodium must be one plus. Well, it is. Sodium is the first family, alkaline metal, right? all one plus, so that's one plus. Is this also? Yes, of course one plus, because nitrogen is one minus. So the whole process does not show any oxidation state change on any of those elements involved. So this is not a redox. So redox? No. All right, so no guys. Now, uh, as the base, now we have another one we need to talk about a little bit because this is the concept involved even deeper and uh, more people may be confused, involved, uh, in including some full professor, all right, chemistry professor. All right, so let's see. This is, the, this is the, another acid we know that is also oxy acid. Sulfur related, it's called what? Sulfuric acid, right? And we got it into the concentration, dilute into you know, lower concentration. And let's react with another strong base, potassium hydroxide. Now, potassium is what? Potassium is right underneath sodium, right? So the same family, that's exactly similar. They are same family uh, elements, they acting, or their chemical property characteristics are almost the same, right? Uh, very very like, but here's the difference. Here's what. Here's sulfuric acid. The nitric acid got a one H, sulfuric acid two. Now the first hydrogen can be dissociated from the H two SO four one hundred percent, but not the second one. The second one only part, well, only about zero point zero one mole out of the one mole of the hydrogen sulfate, which is H SO four one minus. It's a polyatomic cation, or anion, and a very, that's about 2% is all. Now that is called a dissociation. Here, that it was talked about the sulfuric acid by itself in the water before it mixed. But when you mix with the base, which is going through a reaction, there are something, there is something outside this whole molecule to pull the second hydrogen off to completely dissociate both hydrogen atoms out of the sulfate, become 100% dissociation. But that was confused by some full professor in chemistry department. So we're going to continue on this in the part 24. Time is up. All right. Yeah, only a few seconds.